Okay. I will call your attention to another stanza uh, of which the meaning I will give later. I will recite that the Buddha's word. The meaning the Buddha tells us keep away from all the evil action, thoughts and action. Thoughts, words, and action. Sub all, papas, evil, akarana, keeping away. Kusalas upasampada. So think about the skillfulness of controlling these evil, bad thoughts. Sachit. That's what we have been doing, trying to observe, capture the thoughts as it is wandering always. In this process, we become uh, uh, we become skillful observing our thoughts, whether they are good or bad, and always bring our mind to evaluate whether any bad repercussions would be there from our thoughts and action as well as words. So this is the meditation for med today. It's that the thought uh, I thought might be uh, very relevant for a gathering who had long meditation period just before starting my session. So it would kindly open your eyes and we'll make a determination that we spend one hour in listening to this Dhamma talk. So again, I'm very happy to be here. And uh, uh, the topic which I have selected myself is the concept of wealth as it says in the Buddhist teachings. Why I selected this topic was during the past few months, we in our country, we kept hearing to the to become wealthy, uh, Sri Lanka to be raised to a level of high income country, uh, uh, become very healthy, wealthy, and beautiful. Those words we gathered uh, from media and from various you know quarters because we had an election so that is a time where people are given a lot of hopes so the in this context i thought everyone aspires to be uh, rich wealthy so i thought i should survey uh, the concept of wealth in the buddhist teachings so before that i thought you know again what was our uh, knowledge about wealth? Uh, not in the in the philosophical field, but in the normal day-to-day -day world. So there, um, I just I prepared a small note. I thought it is more comfortable for me to read it out, and so after that we can uh, enter into a discussion. So I'll, I'll just go through it. Uh, Mm, so we are, uh, uh, we have been aware that the rich, being rich is very important. Uh, there has been going, growing recognition of the value of Buddhist teachings in recent times with emphasis on contentment and happiness that can be brought about in the life of a person. So I said contentment and happiness, santutti paramang dhanang. Dhanang again is something we aspire, not in the form of tangible wealth as such, but some other form of uh, feeling or mentality. 
So the Buddhist teachings, uh, in the Buddhist teachings, wealth is addressed in relation to both lay person as well as the ordained person. So the lay society and uh, ordained community in respect of the uh, notion of contentment. Um, it is considered the highest state of blissfulness, often described as the state of being free from hatred, ignorance, malice, distrust, and uh, which are arising from the conflicting nature of the uh, mind. You know, we at this moment we try to bring it to a focus because it, it runs, it wanders, you know, without our knowledge. So this conflicting nature of the mind is a force a person uh, is pushed to plunge into bad thoughts or sorrow, distrust, hopelessness, which are labels as suffering opposed to uh, contentment. So the contentment is kind of santuti. Uh, the opposite of is that distress, sorrow, uh, and the like. Uh, I want to make this presentation. Uh, in this presentation, explore the concept of wealth and as it is presented in the various Buddhist teachings drawn from discourses in the Tripitaka, where uh, the wealth is termed as Dhana, the Pali words, Dhana, Vattu, Bogha, Sampada, Punya, Kusala, and the like. So these terms go hand in hand to explain uh, this state of wealth. I think, mind you, that th these are not tangible wealth. These are intangible wealth. So both material and intangible aspects are also included in some discourses where uh, there is much discussion about social, economic, and political aspects of societies. Uh, what I found in two suttas which are very relevant in this discussion were a Chakravarti Sihanada Sutta from the Vegan Nikaya, number 26. I think we are familiar with this sutta. It is regarded as uh, a sutta which talks about the concepts and applications to achieve good governance. And uh, two other uh, suttas from Anguttara Nikaya, uh, Anguttara Nikaya, Sattaka Vagga. Satta means seven. Uh, numerically, there are seven numbers listed in that uh, section. Uh, to examine uh, the insight into the role of wealth, role of wealth in the uh, bringing the prosperity to the society and also the moral supremacy, ensuring the well being of both individuals and nations. I think during the last uh, 50 years or so, there had been much discussion about uh, criticizing the uh, development concept, which was actually um, implemented after the World War II by the developed, so-called developed countries. Uh, there has been a, a development and protection of humanity because the World War II brought much misery to the people and uh, property. So humanity from the negative effect of the World War II. Scholars like Sri Lankan, two scholars I am referring here. One is Dr. H.S.N. H.N.S. Karunathilaka. He was the governor of the Central Bank and who uh, wrote about several articles about the implications of large-scale developmental efforts on countries like on smaller countries like ours, and also um, another scholar, one professor W. S. Karunaratne, he is a professor of Buddhist philosophy. 
Uh, he also made contributions to the literature about the implications of uh, development. And both these uh, articles I give reference later. Uh, one is the, the confused society. The other one is uh, man in society. I'll give later the, this. Uh, with this, I think maybe that has gone viral in the world and some other scholars also started uh, put, doing their surveys and publishing uh, their findings. One very famous person is a German economist called Friedrich Schumacher, who explored the impact of development on both society and environment. Schumacher's creation was Nepal is beautiful, or in other words, it was recognized in the uh, in, in the respect to academic forums as small is beautiful. So this underscores the harm that large scale development can have on ecosystems and on human well-being. Despite the decades that have passed since these publications, the issues they raised remain relevant even today in a more complex form right now. Uh, now we find these last three, four decades, we find that the global organizations like the United Nations system continuing making continued effort uh, to bring, to suggest formulas and various approaches to bring uh, back the sustainability in the society in the name of sustainable development and good governance. So I think that is about the background to my presentation. Uh, when we examine wealth across nations, we observe that some nations have meager share of wealth in monetary terms, while wealthier nations possess a lion's share, which opened the debate as to how to ensure the equitable distribution of wealth among nations. Uh, we know that the wealth in the current practice is measured in terms of monetary value. So they, the global institutions prepare a scale. They, every year it is being up validated and we, they find that uh, most of the smaller countries or the underdeveloped countries are in the lower end of the uh, of this scale and Sri Lanka is one of them. At present, I think our uh, monetary value per capita comes to about $3,800, whereas the richest nations per capita comes to about $80,000 US dollars. So um, these uh, kind of uh, uh, measurements are not very appropriate, not very comprehensive for the ordinary mind. I mean, people like us will have no, no much uh, understanding about the rupees and cents, but we have the Buddhist teachings to understand how rich we are or how poor we are. So for this, I have selected one sutta, which is Chakravarti Sihanada Sutta from the Diga Nikaya, as I mentioned earlier, points to a rational approach which ensures justice, integrity, and long-term progress of a nation. This uh, sutta, in this sutta, Buddha refers to a past story of a king called Dalhanemi. Uh, in this discourse, Buddha, this, uh, the, this, in this past story, a kingdom is ruled by King Dalhanemi, who enjoyed seven forms of fortunes, meaning very well 
um, flourishing country and uh, the king was very happy. Uh, he um, observed that these seven uh, fortunes, the seven fortunes mean uh, the king has elephants, horses, then uh, army, and then other uh, land and things like that. Sapta Ratana. Ratana means fortunes. So the very fertile country with uh, strength in an army and so forth. So uh, the king um, was observing that uh, guarding, the, sorry, the king was guarding these Ratnas very pre preciously and had his armies employed. So he has uh, seven sons and the sons were told, they told that they have to see to that these fortunes are being uh, preserved in this country. In, in any case, if there is a, a missing, if one finds that even a single for, fortune is missing from the country, uh, it is the time for me to leave the kingdom and uh, go to uh, or go away to the forest. So that was the kind of principle governed in this sutta. So you try to do best for your country and if you fail, it is the time for that person to leave it to another person and uh, go out and engage in whatever, you know, to last for the rest of the years. So this happened in this, um, in this sutta. Uh, uh, the fortunes, these fortunes are described as moral values. The ministers of the uh, king were, were, are obliged to guard and in an event, breaching of a single one of them uh, advised the king to take proper action. As a result, there was no theft, no hatred, no fear among the subjects of the kingdom as everyone had their fair share of wealth. Here wealth meaning they had a normal, happy life. They had everything for their uh, survival and development. The king urged the people to follow the five precepts. That is actually the method that ensured a comfortable, convenient and peaceful society. So five precepts, we all know, refraining from killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, lying, and intoxication. Failing to uphold these precepts, the Buddha taught would lead a country or an individual falling into poverty. So that is the Chakravati Sihanada Sutta story in terms of uh, ensuring the wealthy nation, a wealth for the benefit of the subjects of that country. So the, the other, there is another section I am selecting to discuss the other side of it, the poverty. So there are, the Buddha says there is poverty, spiritual poverty as well as poverty of, by, from the material uh, supplies. Poverty can play a vicious cycle in the life of a lay person as illustrated in several discourses in the Anguttara Nikaya. Uh, I state one sutta, inner sutta, indebtedness. So which is a familiar word to us, indebtedness. Um, it is the worst agony that a person can encounter. The Pali word says that Dalibyang bikkave dukkang lokasming gihi nang kamabogi nang. So we, uh, as uh, lay people, lay people it, like to enjoy life. Kamabogi, meaning if all the comforts, you know, the wife, children, property, everything. So if if uh, there is a, a state where people cannot afford these things, it will be for the sorrow of the lay people. According to the explanation in this discourse, Inasutta, 
it's uh, in the Pattakamma, uh, Pattakamma section of the Ganguttara Nikaya. When a person lacks sufficient means for survival, he is pushed into making, make a borrowing. Inang Adhyati is the Pali term. I am using this Pali words because they are so familiar and useful for us to understand the uh, current uh, uh, discussions uh, we observe, we come across in the media and in various fora. Uh, so Inang Adhyati, when a person becomes, you know, poor, he, there is no option. He has to go for borrowing. So if he is not stealing uh, or not getting other things, so he then goes for borrowing. So borrowing is there, but with some repercussions. So um, uh, borrowing makes a person pushed into series of adversities which accompanies more suffering. Let's understand those several steps. First thing, when you go to borrow, what, what happens? You have to agree to certain conditions. He agrees to pay an interest. The Pali word is vadding, uh, vadding patisunati. Vadding can be uh, an uh, additional amount. So if you borrow 100, you agree to repay maybe 10% more. So this is discussed in this particular sutta, in a sutta. What being partitionary agrees. So uh, he has to keep this agreement now, then he agrees to a time frame as well to repay. Kala batang vaddi. See, all steps are given in the, in the teachings. So kala batang, I'll pay back maybe in few days or few months or one year or whatever. Kala uh, batam. So if he is unable to repay during the promised time, he is subjected to be blamed by the lender. So he is being abused. If he doesn't pay, repay, he, he is being abused, meaning uh, whatever the words are being exchanged, we know that. So uh, th that is the third thing. When he is unable to meet the deadlines, he is entangled in a worse situation. So if the if the money is not returned, what will happen? We always expedite argument, quarrel, abuse. Then also um, sometimes we see physical Torture, you know, physical torture. So this is this. Uh, these words are given in the Anucharanti pi bandhanam pi. Ekyanne bandhana ekyanne uh, assaulting, assaulting. So and injuring. So this is the implications of getting, becoming indebted. I think I uh, in I. To take uh, something out of this uh, discussion, and we also here in our country in several, you know, uh, discussions. You know, if the if the um, loans or the bonds or whatever not cleared, there will be so many punishments in terms of the whole country has to pay. So I, I so I think these are very relevant. This sutta is very relevant uh, to discuss about the wealth concept of wealth. Uh, the, this way, the borrower is falling into a situation where he suffers both physically and mentally. This example uh, from the Buddhist teachings is applicable not only to an individual, but also to a nation, big or small. Lack of material wealth is a cause for suffering. However, the Buddhist teachings provide guidance on how to overcome these challenges through skillful means. What are these skillful means? There are so many uh, suttas are there. How to be uh, skillful in managing your own affairs. One sutta I, um, ref I refer here, we all know that Vyagga Pajya Sutta from Sangyukta Nikaya. 
Um, the, here actually what is important is a, a group of youth, Polia brothers they call, Digajan Polia, they were enjoying luxuries, they were very wealthy you know, people, they were enjoying all the luxuries and uh, they thought that why should we enjoy all that, you know, uh, why only this, maybe next life also we should make sure that we get this kind of, you know, luxuries. So they went to Buddha and posed this question. Um, we are enjoying all these comforts. The, uh, please tell us how do we ensure that such good life is being available for us in our next life. So Buddha gave a formula. I think we know that this formula has four things. Again, uh, it's kind of wealth, I would say. Wealth, you know, how to ensure wealth through these uh, fortunes, this skillfulness. One is Uttana Sampada, diligence and right effort in what is to be done. Whatever you do, you should effort Uttana, meaning perseverance or diligence in the right way. Uh, number two, Arakha Sampada. What is earned and collected must be protected. And it, you, you should not let it, you know, waste, but Arakha. Arakha means it just, you know, um, uh, some you know, produce, uh, maybe perishable, then you should know how to, how to save it. Maybe you know, those days we had drying, uh, making into, if there's the milk, for example. Now, milk is uh, going through various processes for the, for, for long, long, long term uh, use, uh, like the butter, like curd and you know, cheese, things like that. So, Arakka Sampada, it's just one example. Then, uh, the third one is the Kalyana Mittata. We all know that into association with kind and compassionate friends is the meaning given in uh, uh, in the book, but uh, Kalyanamitta is, this is also Kalyanamitta gathering. Uh, the other fourth one is uh, Samaji Vikata. Samaji Vita meaning ability to uh, manage your income and expenditure in a balanced way. Uh, uh, Oh, that, yeah. Okay, now going back to, going back to uh, uh, another, another concept uh, of, of um, production. Uh, Buddha has not set up a limitation, limit uh, to the development, limit to the, uh, limit to the, um, to what you do. And in the in, in the in the wealth formation, Buddha says you have to be able to collect as much as possible. As much as possible, the Pali term is used, ulare boga. Ulare means large quantity. So boga is produced. So why Buddha has not set up a limit is that there were many ways of taking care of the large. Uh, uh, productions through various means and in whatever occupation farming, trading animal keeping and the like this kind of ulare uh, bogo is the is explained as the wealth that could be possessed by people who are engaged in agriculture or similar uh, trade so the wealth is very much related to the occupation of a person in, in this second area. Uh, Buddha advises uh, one rich person, you know that one rich person is Anatta Pindika. He is the treasurer of that Buddha's time. His duty was collecting uh, dues and taxes for the king and he maintains the treasury. Uh, uh, for 
for the uh, once the uh, Aratapindika came to the Buddha and uh, he had some conversations and Buddha uh, advised him how to make use of your wealth. You know, he has large sum of money. Uh, this in this sutta, the Pattakamma Sutta, Buddha advises four types, four ways of using wealth. Which this is very important even for us, those who have certain you know, uh, stab stability in our income and we collect certain deposits also. So perhaps we may be some small anathapindikas, <laughs> Sudatta. So Buddha says, now um, uh, you have to first enjoy yourself. Attanan suketi pineti. So uh, sometimes we wonder those who collect a lot of you know money and things like that, they don't may, they don't, it doesn't seem that they are really enjoying, you know, they collect. So they may be getting satisfaction by collecting well, but Buddha says, no, you have to be have, you have to satisfy yourself first. Attana, sukheti. Sukhe means for comfort, pineti, happiness. Comfort and happiness both are mentioned in this two other Number two. Samma sukang pariharati, attanang suketi pineti, that similarly, samma sukang to, to spend, to invest in, in uh, socially acceptable uh, things. So, we have to give away the, I think, Anatta Pindaka had, you know, meals, daily meal supply by his, you know, door. So, he spent a lot of money for others, for the welfare of others. At the same time, I found that you know in another uh, another uh, sutta, uh, he pays, he uh, takes you know effort to ensure that the money is spent uh, for uh, uh, for the uh, uh, Raja Bali. There are kind of duties, uh, Atiti Bali, Nyati Bali, Raja Bali. Ubbapeta Bali. Bali means duties. So that means you have to give to your visitors, if there are visitors, and your relatives, and also uh, relatives. Ubbapeta Bali. Uh, the departed ones and the duty, Raja Bali. Whatever due to the, the, the country or the pressure of the land should also be uh, made use of. Uh, the, the other sutta I refer to again, similar things I mentioned, everyone knows this. Sigalo uh, Vadu Sutta in the Diga Nikaya, uh, Sutta number 31, presents best practices by a person uh, to be performed as duties and obligations uh, on you know six directions, six quarters, you know, parents, children, teachers, pupils, husband and wife, employers and employees friends and associates and religious dignitaries. These relationships ensure long-term sustenance of social relations among the people of all walks of life and towards social well-being and stability and long-term uh, uh, maintaining long-term uh, well wealthiness over a long period of time. Uh, these are all uh, I mentioned so far the material aspect of wealth. So Buddha never denied to not to collect wealth, but collect as much as, as much as possible, and at the same time employing, investing it in new way. Um, there is another section of the suttas where another form of wealth is mentioned. Again, Anguttara Nikaya, seventh section, has, has many, many uh, references to, to dhana. We all know that uh, vittata dhana, vittata meaning you, it, is, you, it will not be departed, you, you will be with them. That will never fade away. So the, this number of ways that the person can avoid um, pain and suffering uh, uh, suffering. So these are uh, uh, mentioned. Uh, everybody knows that Sadda, Sila, Kiri, Tapa, Sutta, Chaga, Panya. 
So this uh, Sankit Dana, this chapter is very good. I think I I um, request you all to refer to that. Many ways the the development of spiritual happiness, spiritual collect collecting spiritual wealth is mentioned in this sutta. So you know Sadda is this assertiveness and being confident in whatever you. Uh, learn and you know pay attention to see uh, is moral discipline and not committing wrong things. Here is sense of shame and doing wrong. Ottapa, fear of the consequences of wrongdoing. Sutta, keenness to learn and self correction. Chaga, being generous and sharing of what is good. Panya is ability to uh, be empathetic towards the other. This is my explanation to Panya in this context. Because panya is is your ability to evaluate, you know, the good and bad of something or some person, and be not disturbed by the negative influences. So that is what empathy I describe in this context. These these are called fortunes again. Wealth are wider not only to be to be rich, but for your personal growth as well and ensure economic prosperity of a nation. So the Buddha, in conclusion, uh, uh, mentions the wealth extends beyond material possession to include moral values, social relationships, and spiritual development of the individual. True wealth according to the Buddhist teachings, lies in living a life of righteousness, contentment, and balance. The teachings remind us that wealth is not just about accumulation of wealth, but sharing, protecting, and cultivating a sense of harmony and prosperity for oneself and others. I think I have taken my time and leave... Uh, there are many gaps. In fact, you know, I just collected you know, from the suttas you now here and there. But uh, knitting it together will happen, I think, with the audience asking any questions and clarifications. Sorry. Okay, so I'll invite uh, ideas, uh, any um, clarifications from uh, the audience and. Uh, uh, I hope that uh, I made sufficient uh, points, you know, with regard to wealth as taught in the Buddhist teachings. Thank you. Uh, these are actually the practices, the, the systems, systems and applications, because you... Uh, uh, yeah, I think they are all morally sound. It doesn't make any harm to the person himself or the society. Sampada is the fortunes. Sampa, values. Set of values, virtues. Uh, the Buddhist whole teachings are built, set up on an ethical foundation. So this ethical foundation uh, has this particular aspect taught to uh, those young Youths, Uttana Sampada. So it's, yeah. 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 Samajivika. Yeah. Sama, sama is the yeah, balance. Sama is in Pali also. Sama is the balance. Jivi means living, living in a balanced way. That means that the one interpretation is that whatever you earn should be matched with your expenses. You do not overspend or underspend. So that's the system, the method the Buddha taught to these youth. But nowadays we find many youth, they don't have any money, but they spend more and more. Credit card. Uh, through credit card, yes. So we have bad, you know, systems given to us. So these are coming not from our land, from elsewhere. So we have to be very careful uh, about um, how we go about, you know, using what is available in the market, what is advertised in the television, radio, and all that, and what is uh, being um, uh, uh, encouraged by other people. 
so many things. I think the Buddhist uh, principles are much more needed and necessary uh, as you know, the servants of the Buddha is doing this. I have selected this way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the question is that, you know, how Tigalo's father Sutta is applicable in this context. You see, I think it's very uh, relevant and in Malaysia and in Singapore, this Sutta has been translated and uh, made into small booklet and distributed, especially uh, Malaysia when uh, Kirama uh, Dhamma Ananda Tero was there, then I have some nice books. I'm thinking these things should be actually given as, you know, uh, in compulsory reading in the Dhamma school, as well as in the lower grades up to the uh, secondary level. So then at least when they grow up, you know, to be, you know, 14 or 15 years, they will have laid good foundation about the values, what to do and what to do, not to do. So these are very important. So well, even though wealth, uh, Buddha mentions wealth is necessary, you have to increase the wealth, multiply it, ulare bhoga, multiply it, but at the same time, using, you have to be careful. You have to not to waste, not to borrow, even if, if you know, things are very interesting, I think in this particular section, I have not dealt much, but are there any other questions? Thank you, thank you uh, very much, Malika. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. Is it, uh, am I right in saying that in Buddhism, uh, poverty has never been upheld as something nice in some religion, or oh, he's poor and that is, you know, something to be, it's not a good thing. It is not a thing value. Yeah. And I think uh, we have, we spoke once on what hunger was considered the worst disease oh. by the wizards, yeah. Padma, oh. And then he has also gone on to say that uh, amazingly at that time, that the, uh, if you're poor, the parents will be always uh, you know, spending time looking how, how to earn, how to earn something, you know, to put some food on the table. Yeah. And that would mean that the children and the poor man's time needs the most amount of care really, from, for various reasons. Yeah. And uh, from their health or the young men are least or whatever. Uh, their care situations are not good, their surroundings they live in are not safe. But that child gets the least care. That has been told, I can't remember the sutra, but so much about the importance of ahara, food, sabbe, satta, ahara, and so forth. And uh, that everybody needs food, and that uh, poverty is something not to be, you know, really to describe poverty. Yes. So you're he's speaking to us about economics. Uh, stability and necessities was very, very valuable yeah. and at a good time. Mm -hmm. We have done some yeah. excellent approach to the topic. Yeah. Uh, but I think we did touch on it, but something that I think which yeah. I found very interesting yeah. was when somebody came and met somebody called Buddha, if I remember, uh -huh. came and told the Buddha how he, he used to come often to meet the Buddha mm. and he said you know how he knows of somebody who had such beautiful uh, things in his house paintings and you know he was describing that he's a very rich man mm. and this this somebody he was speaking about how rich he is and how beautiful the things in his house are mm. and he was going on explaining this to the Buddha the Buddha listened and said yes that's very good but uh, the real seven wealths that the person is can be considered the seven well spiritual well mm -hmm. was what he said Sadda Danan, as you said, Sadda Sila Danan, Tiriotapyan Danan, that is shame and uh, Sadda Sila, which is discipline, yeah. Tiriotapya and fear and shame. Yeah. And Sutta Danan, the meaning you have to have heard the suttas, you have heard the dham. Sutta Danan, the Chagoka. Ability to give up, yeah. and also giving up, giving yeah. and giving up. Yeah. Wisdom. Yeah. 
So why you said that yeah. those are the real seven wealths that uh, from the Buddhist point of view were considered the best wealth yeah. to have. But yeah. of course one has to earn and there's no really limit to that as long as the methods were wholesome, isn't it? Yeah. Because they gave a certain traits that were forbidden traits. If I could then tell us a little bit about the yeah. forbidden phase, please. Uh, yes, uh, I think Manavri, you gave a summary of the seven uh, dhana, seven sadda dhanang and all that. Um, what I thought that, you know, the alibhyang, it actually the poor, uh, the material poverty is the Buddha mentioned in uh, even in uh, in that period, uh, during that time. Uh, the Buddha valued uh, sharing, dhana. So there had been uh, many places where the, the poor people come and have their, you know, daily bread. So that is one way that uh, with this time things were distributed, you know, the haves distributing uh, to the have-nots, right? So you mentioned about the importance of uh, the, the food, the kabalinka rahar. I think that I think we have to take it in that way. There are four kinds of food. Uh, one is that the the material, the food that we consume, in like your rice and things like that, kabalinkara, which is for the nourishment of the body, the to, uh, to create the muscles and all that. Kabalinkara uh, ahara, then pasahara. So kabalinkara ahara alone is not enough. What you eat, a rice or plate of rice, is not enough. You have to have some good you know, feelings also. Maybe you should the whatever the if the rice plate is given to you with you know love, affection, and emotional you know feeling. So I think the the person gets more satisfaction from that you know along with the uh, what he, what along with what she what he or she eats. So kabalinkara ahara, phasa ahara. Manu Sanchetanahara, meaning when you consume that plate of rice, you know, is given with, with lovingly, then it stays in the mind. You keep, you know, thinking and praising and praising that person. So the, the, the series of good thoughts are generated in the mind. So uh, it is Manu Sanchetana. It stays in the mind and can bring it back whenever we want. And Vinjanahara, which develops you know better i think vinyana meaning ability to see things clearly vinyana vinyana so that means the person taking good food becomes a stable person who can uh, make use of his senses eyes ears nose everything uh, perfectly so that's why i think dana in this country has become so venerated so graciously um, involved, I think these days, Katina, so many dhanas. So, I think the Buddhist teaching is living in our society, but however, they are not meaningfully being practiced. There's hardly any um, discussion, Dhamma Desana, describing these uh, aspects uh, to you know, to the interest to create interest in the mind of the ordinary people. I think we are.